Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Spanish Forks here for Kist. We're glad that you could join us today. It's a great place to eat, and we hope that you learn a little bit about it, and we hope to make it an interesting show for you. Let me introduce Jared Rowley, and he's the one that does a lot of the baking and is a very busy man around here. Uh, tell me, Jared, have you always been in Utah? It's home state for you? I actually grew up in Texas. I uh, was there for 18 years. Oh. Went to Ricks College in Idaho. Um, saw what mountains were all about, and then kind of just moved a little bit south from there. Oh, good. So right here Is that where you met your wife? I actually met her in Pleasant Grove, Utah, oh. another small town. Well, so. she's a hometown girl. That's right. Uh -huh. uh, when my wife and I first started coming here, it's about 10 years ago now, uh -huh. uh, we love this place. It's the biggest sandwiches I'd ever seen in my life at that point, and I was very pleased with the way everything worked. Uh, how long have you been in baking? Uh, I started, my wife bought this in October of 2014. Uh, James and Angie Fillmore were the previous owners. And I, that's, knew, I knew them. And James is actually the one that taught me the bread making and, and things that we started with from there. And that's where I, I just started with just the basics and having the girls do the desserts and just so I could get the bread right, the cinnamon rolls right. And then slowly they'd let, they've let me learn the rest as we've been working together. Oh, well, so. good for them. Yeah. Uh, well, by the way, you do a great job. I appreciate that. Yeah. We try hard. Yeah. Uh, I noticed there was a great article in the paper that I read over the weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, have you seen that article? I have. Uh, we, the Daily Herald was, I don't know how we got in there, but I really appreciate them. They did a great job. Um, they did an article on our sandwiches, fudge, treats. Uh, some of the pies and some of the local things that we do that a lot of people don't know that we do here. Yeah. Uh, one of the comments in the article was, it says meat and snacks out, out on our sign. I noticed that. Uh, and yes, we do smoke our own turkeys, uh, do a lot of our own meats, pastrami's, roast beef. We still do that, but we're so much more. Yeah, so. well, it, it, you can get full meals. I've noticed on your board up there that you have a different menu every single day. Uh, is it the same menu every week or is it really different all the time? It, it rotates uh, kind of a monthly uh, special. Uh, what I like to do is ask the customers what we haven't had in a while and I find some regulars throughout a lunch rush and they say, oh, like today one of them, I talked to him on Friday, he says, I haven't had your French dip in a while and it's the best. When can you do that for me? I said, what day next week can you make it in? And so I picked that. Today's Monday is a French dip. Going to be um, French dip today. Um, he's get, he got his chili request, and then if we didn't do creamy chicken noodle, we'd have a lot of upset people. So we oh, added yeah. that on there as well. I'll tell you, so. uh, my wife and I were in Orem one time, no, Provo. I said, oh, let's go across the street and have a pizza. She says, no, I'd rather have some chili at Hickory Kist. Yes. And uh, we came all the way down. It wasn't a chili day. Oh, no. And, oh, you've never seen a more disappointed person. That's how much she loves your chili. And when I saw on the board, today is chili, Red Bull with soup. I called her immediately and I said, don't call me until 11 o'clock, but if you like, we'll go here for lunch. That's right. She loves the place. Well, and the most important thing for us is Hickory Kiss has been here for a lot of years and done a lot of things really well. And people have come to expect that when they come in. So yes, in the last year and a half, uh, my wife and I have tried to add some new things, but we tried to keep the staples of what made this Hickory Kiss and what set it apart. Uh, the bread bowls, the soups from scratch. Um, the wraps. The, the wraps we've added. We didn't added have wraps in. before. Um, and the wraps were something that my wife preferred, and she asked me about it. There's three different kinds. We do spinach wraps, wheat wraps, tomato basil wraps. Same price as a sandwich, but for those that just don't want our very thick bread slices on their sandwich, they can always get a wrap instead. I can only eat a half a sandwich, <laughs> and I usually prefer the mini sandwiches because that's just right. Right, right. In fact, in the 10 years that we've been coming here, they've only got one order wrong, just one. And that was because they ran out of the, the, the rolls, so they gave me half a sandwich for the same price. Okay. Well, we, we had to take care of you regardless, right? Yeah. A happy customer always comes back. Absolutely. <laughs> now, I noticed in that article, it mentioned several favorite things. Uh, there was the cinnamon bread, um, the honey apple. Caramel apple cake. Caramel apple cake. Uh -huh. uh, is it possible that we can watch you make one of those? Uh, they're not doing a caramel apple cake today. Uh, we will do the cinnamon bread. Okay. And I believe the ladies wanted to make some of our cream pies. Uh, we, the day before Thanksgiving, we sell about 600 pies out of here. 
Yeah, um, that's, that's not very many. It's about a it's a 48 hour process. We yeah. we don't close the doors the first three days before Thanksgiving. All we do is bake rolls and pies for 24 hours. I know so. you sell a lot of rolls because mm -hmm. I come here every Thanksgiving. You got to order them a day ahead of time at least. Exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. And I get a couple dozen rolls for Thanksgiving. Yes, I, I walked in two Saturdays ago, pulled the order book open to look at it, and I had 34 dozen rolls and eight meat trays that I had to have ready by noon. So I, I got to work pretty Piece quick cake. on that. Piece so we're, we're used to it. Uh, we can handle it and we can do it. So we have a great crew and a lot of people are cross trained to do a lot of different things and everybody's willing to help out. So Great. Well, I'm sure that uh, anybody that comes and tries this place is going to love it as much as my wife and I. Why don't we run back and you show me how you make your cinnamon bread. Sounds great. Good. Jared, we're here, what we talked about when we're going to make one of your special, unique little dishes, uh, the cinnamon bread. Uh -huh. uh, I'd be quite interested to know, is this unique to your place here, Hickory Kist? Uh, there are some other people that do a cinnamon bread version, but this one is one that we do just here at Hickory Kist. Um, I'd never heard of it before, before we came here, and once we started making it, it was, it was a trick to learn. Yeah. That's for sure. It's pretty well received, I understand. Yes, very much so. We have a lot of people that come in just for the bread. They make French toast out of it. They slice it just with butter, uh, honey butter, whatever they like. So we, we sell it on a whole loaf retail level. So we go through quite a bit daily. That's really good. Well, about how many loaves? Usually about seven to eight a day That's is what bad. we're going through, six days a week. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. And we do another, we also do the white and the wheat bread retail. So we go through 20 to 25 retail loaves. Uh, between you, the three. You do the cinnamon every day? We do the cinnamon every day as well, yes. Very good. Okay, now tell me, basically, without giving away secrets, what goes into your cinnamon bread? Uh, salt, sugar, yeast, milk. Um, we'll start with the salt. I'm not going to tell you the ounces, but everything's weighed out and measured perfectly. So we go through and mix it before we get everything in the bowl, all the ingredients are measured and made. Okay. The first one was sugar? No, salt. First one was salt. And you go by increasing weight. I'm increasing the weight because I know how many ounces each is. And then I just add it up to what we're, our final product. That's how a painter mixes his paint in the shop. Correct. And I just eyeball the scale and keep pouring just to make sure I hit that right thing. Because if we're off just a little bit, It'll really change the recipe itself. I do a little bit of baking at home, and I understand what you're saying. Yeah, it took, uh, I would say, at least two weeks of doing this every day uh, with the former owner and one of his best bakers before I actually got it to where I was like, that's like theirs. Yeah. Now I'm doing their bread. So. It took me a couple of years to get pancakes the way I like them for that reason. Exactly. I understand that. Okay, so I'm going to take this. These are our dry ingredients. Put it right in the mixer behind you. And then I'll move over here to the wet. There's, a, there's an order we do it so that everything works out well. Um, That's regular evaporated milk? This is regular evaporated milk. How many cans? One can. One? One can. Yeah. So, and then we have our oil. Regular vegetable, corn oil? Vegetable oil. I usually use canola. Uh, that's my preferred, yeah. and I have noticed the texture of the bread when you use canola, it is a lot easier to work with. The bread will um, stretch, so you can mold it into what you want. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, this flour is from Dawn Foods. It is a straight bread baking flour. Um, I've tried to do it at home with all purpose. It just doesn't work out. Too heavy. Same. Yeah, your bread will come out wet, or it'll come out so heavy that it feels dry and underproof no matter what you do to it. Yeah. Now there is a consistency to these scoops as well. Um, you can probably count and see what I'm doing, but uh, it's also kind of workable to each one of us scoops a little bit different size. So as I'm training people, I train the way I do it. Then I work with them on how they do it. And then we get the recipe to build right so it's not wet or dry. Right. But the exact science is the actual measure of the dry ingredients right. to make it work. So I'm going to start the mixer. I like to get the ingredients working together with the flour first. And if you'll hand me the water. Uh, the water's already pre-measured. 
And I'll pour it in while the mixer's going. That way it gets evenly throughout the flour. So, and I'll run this now for, the mixer will run for 13 minutes. And then I, then I go back to it and then we take the bread out, we stretch it, we roll it. Um, there will be one more step where it goes back into the mixer because I will do about a half batch today with the uh, cinnamon bread and I'll use the other half just to make our white retail. So I'll show you that as soon as the mixer's done. And you say this makes six to seven loaves? Correct. This will make six to seven loaves of bread and I'm just gonna split the batch today with some cinnamon and, and some of the white retail offering. Good, sounds very good. I can hardly wait to taste it. Me too. This is Ronnie. She's worked here at Hickory Kiss for a while. Let's talk with her. Ronnie, tell me, how long have you worked here? 17 plus years. 17. Is this the only job you ever really had? No. Oh, okay. But you like this job? I like this job. Yeah, you've been here for 17. That's, you wouldn't do that if you didn't like it. I guess not. Yeah. <laughs> tell me, what are some of the things that uh, you gals bake here? We bake all the bread and we bake uh, the cookies. We make cookies. We make desserts. We invent our own things. And yep. sometimes they are good and sometimes we... Have to eat them. Have to eat them and <laughs> send them to, with friends. I don't know. Um, I don't know. We make pies, cakes. Do you have specific things that you make every day? We... Um, no. Well, we make cookies because uh, we give out cookies with every meal or a treat. We make Rice Krispies sometimes. Every sandwich comes every, with a treat. Or soup, whatever they order. Yeah. Um, we try to keep the dessert cooler full that's up front, so we make some cakes, pies, yeah. whatever. We kind of do whatever. So that's one of the fun things about this job is we, Jared likes, lets us just make whatever. Probably bleep that up. Uh, we just kind of make, yeah, what we... Make something that tastes good. Yeah, what we'd want to yeah. serve our families. Yeah. Well, I, I told Lynette, I says, you put a lot of those uh, goodies on top of the pie oh, yeah. on my slice. Cause yeah. I got, I got a hold of my wife almost. Yeah. You got to have some, you got to have a connection in the kitchen. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about how Hickory Kist got started. The business? Yeah, the Hickory Kist kitchen and the well, business. Well, I just learned recently that it started out when Mountain Country Foods wanted to feed their employees, wanted to have a place for them to go eat and take their breaks. And it was just so great that they just started opening the door to, to the public. They told their friends and, and the public started coming. Um, and then they ran a pretty good business here. Um, I hired on when there was, it had changed ownership. And I worked for them for 16 years. 16. And now I, I'm still here. Yeah. Uh, talked briefly with Jared. He mentioned that uh, uh, he was taught by you gals how to do some of the stuff. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We teach him how to do things. And then some of the girls, they work on Saturdays. And so we've taught them some of the, some of the desserts that we make and um, some of our tips or treat, you know, secrets that they can put out a dessert on Saturday if they need to. What was it you were going to do today? What special desserts were you making today? We've got a carrot cake we baked. Lynette's made the raspberry yum and we've made the toffee crunch pie that she's worked on and yeah, we've got some... Yeah, crumbles all over the top. Yeah. My slice has got extra. Yeah, yours is extra. And we have snickerdoodles in the oven and we're making the Ore Oreos, the, or the big chocolate Oreos. sandwich cookies yeah. and the oatmeal creams. We've started making the oatmeal creams. They are more popular than just the oatmeal cookie. So yeah. I do want to say that we do make our fresh soups every day. We cut the vegetables. We put, it's not from a bag. That's one thing when you ask what we do every morning, that's the first thing we do is soup. Cut up the, the cut prep up work the, for mm -hmm. the soups. And then we take it up front and put it on the stove and then we cream it or, you know, whatever. We made chili today, so she's got the chili all ready. And yeah, I, I got here before we started doing our thing and I saw on the menu board, soup chili. in a bowl, chili, called my wife, left her a message, lunch. Lunch today. She loves the chili. Yeah, and then the creamy chicken noodles are most popular. Yeah. Soup. So we make that quite often, almost every day. Yeah. The days we don't make it, everyone's sad. Yeah. Well, so. Ronnie, thanks for being with us. Yep. Enjoy the conversation.
We're through with the mix, and it looks like chocolate chip cookie mix. It, it does. It looks just what? like mom's cookies, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, now what are we going to do now? Okay, so as you can tell, the dough changed color because some of the chips already melted, uh, but most of them will melt in the oven. Now I'm just going to cut the dough and weigh it out. And this, the chocolate chips, or the cinnamon chips, excuse me, make it very wet. Um, but I weigh each one out. They, they're a two-pound portion per loaf. And you see that once they get, it gets moist, it gets a lot heavier. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, and a, lot a little bit moisture, harder to work in. Yeah, does a lot of that moisture bake out? It, it will. It, a lot of it will bake out, but what we want to keep a lot of it in there as well, because that next day, we don't sell it anymore. We put it on a bread rack for a discount rack. Um, and we have people that eat this three, four, or five days later, and it's still nice and moist inside. Yeah. So it's, it's one of those things you just kind of get to that perfect level. And it takes a lot of practice to make that batch and just get it there. So lot, lots of repetition. That's why you do what you do. <laughs> so and then I'll just knead this through, roll it, put it in a pan. Now, and keep in mind, all this goes into a proofer for about 45 minutes before it even makes it to the oven. Right. A little raise. Yes. It'll raise about halfway in the proofer, and then it finishes off in the oven. It really jumps about three to four inches taller once it hits the heat in that first five, ten right. minutes. I had a donut maker one time explain to me how yeast works and what it does and mm -hmm. why it's not easy to work with. It can be fun sometimes because uh, you put that bread in there, you're worried about it, and you think, did I do something wrong? Did I do something wrong? But maybe that ye yeast was just a little bit late on the reaction, and then it blows up on you. You're like, whew, okay, we made that one. Now we've got See, three in here. you still got about a halfway to go, so you'll get probably six out of it this, won't you? Maybe even seven? Uh, we'll probably get closer to seven, maybe eight. So what I'm going to do is do this first full five pan, and then I'll split the rest. Uh, one of the things when these cook, they do expand so much that they'll touch each other. And if I can spread them out a little bit in a second pan, um, it helps them cook eat more even. I know cooking even is the most important part about baking. Yes. That's why somebody invented turning in the oven. Well, and it's just as important what the ladies do up front with the proofer and in the oven is what I did to start because they can make or break this dough once it hits the proofer because underproofed you're miserable overproofed it just doesn't react the same as well yeah it, it gets too much air in it and then it won't uh, cooperate mm -hmm. see and this was actually perfect we ended up with seven loaves so we'll go through this one today and then we'll start fresh again tomorrow morning very good Jared, I really appreciated the tour that we've had here today, and I hope the folks at home have really enjoyed it as well. Uh, we've seen how you make the bread, how the girls make desserts, how they make the sandwiches, the interior, uh, where they got all this stuff for customers, and I think that the people that are going to come are really going to enjoy it. So, Jared, thanks again. Thank you. I really appreciate it.